You've probably heard the buzz that Japan supposedly already tested its sixth generation fighter jet, right? Maybe you've even seen those sensational YouTube videos with titles like, Shocking! Japan has launched the world's deadliest aircraft into the skies. Well, let me tell you, it's all fake and clickbait, my friend. Seriously, give it a little more time and they'll start claiming the thing's already been to Mars. Sure, development's underway, and by 2030 they really do plan to roll out something truly monstrous. That's the FX, and we'll definitely talk about it later. But for now, I bet most folks don't even realize that the Japanese are still flying the good old F-35. Yep, fifth generation American stealth, not some anime-style Japanese super robot. This is where we go demonstrate high angle of attack maneuverability as well as departure resistance. You know what's the funniest part? You click on those flashy videos with loud titles expecting a show and it's just some footage of an F-35 at Misawa Air Base shot from an angle to make it look even slightly futuristic. And there you go, another 100,000 views for Japan's newest fighter jet. But you're here because this isn't just another story about Japanese jets. We're going to break down why it's absolutely critical for the U.S. that Japan is flying the F-35. This isn't just some alliance formality, there's a strategy behind it that directly affects American security. And most importantly, I'll show you real facts about the new FX that'll genuinely surprise you, because you won't find this stuff in clickbait headlines. Digital engineering has really been a game changer to this program. Look at it this way, the Japanese are flying the F-35, and for the U.S. it's as convenient as when your neighbor buys the exact same set of tools you have. First off, all the parts are the same, it's easier to do repairs, swap components, and even share tips like how to fix this stealth jet in five minutes. Second, it's about money. America sells its jets and the maintenance packages. Think of it like a premium service with a monthly subscription. But here's the twist. Japan's decided that the awesome F-35 just isn't enough anymore, and now they're hard at work on their own beast, the FX fighter. And you might be thinking, seriously? They're planning to replace America's fifth gen toy with their own project? And Japan says, absolutely. Because the FX isn't just another plane, it's basically a fighter robot from the future. There's a lot of uh, power on the airplane, uh, you know, and it really wants to go flying. The F-35 is no doubt a solid bird. Speed, around Mach 1.6, about 1,200 miles per hour. Range, just over 1,370 miles. Cutting edge avionics, radar evading stealth, it checks all the boxes. But you know what it can't do? Fly without a pilot or control a swarm of drones while striking a ground target at the same time. The FX, though? It's being built to do exactly that. Honestly, it looks like the Japanese have been binge-watching too much Evangelion or Ghost in the Shell, because what they're about to launch into the sky is basically a cybernetic wasp with attitude. Picture this, the FX speeds up to Mach 2.5, range over 1,860 miles, next-gen stealth tech with a more aggressive airframe and adaptive skin that changes properties depending on conditions. On top of that, an onboard AI capable of making real decisions without the pilot. You're no longer just flying a jet, you're commanding a thinking platform. And to make it even crazier, it'll be able to control drone swarms acting as its personal mini-escort. When it comes to weaponry, the Japanese are aiming for something way cooler than the classic AIM-120 AMRAMs you'll find on the F-35. The FX is set to carry new hypersonic missiles and even experimental directed energy weapons. Yep, we're talking lasers here. And of course, next-gen air-to-air -air missiles with active radar seekers, which are already being tested by the Japanese military. Here's the kicker. The FX borrows tech from the old X-2 Shinshin program which was once hyped as a stealth jet designed to counter China's J-20. And here's the fun part. The very same Japanese companies that used to crank out parts for the F-35 are now working on this new project, but this time it's all for Japan's own use. One more thing that really stuck with me, the FX will include stealth to sensors tech, meaning it won't just be invisible to radars, it'll actively jam and deceive enemy systems to the point where it's like, I don't even exist. Basically, imagine Neo in the sky while the enemy's still looking for the red pill, the FX is already sitting behind them. 
The irony is, while some countries are still dreaming about sixth-generation fighters, the Japanese are already calculating how many runways they'll need to upgrade for this beast. And here's the wild part. Japan's the only country in Asia that got direct access to the F-35 right off the bat, and now they're basically saying, thanks for the tech, we'll make something even better. But it's not all as smooth as it sounds at first glance. Picture this, Japanese engineers sitting around a table saying, we're gonna build the FX, the coolest fighter jet in the world. Then they start pulling out blueprints with everything all at once. Stealth better than a B-21, laser straight out of Star Wars and drone control with a single button. But you know what happened in reality? The moment they got to the part about that combat laser, the problems began. Because how do you cram something the size of a small pickup truck that guzzles as much power as a small town into a jet that's supposed to fly faster than Mach 2? Not even Godzilla movies got that crazy. The fact is, experimental lasers weighing several tons are seriously tough to squeeze into a jet that also has to stay stealthy. So here's the dilemma. You want a jet with near-zero radar signature, but then you bolt a giant laser turret under its belly? And just like that, your stealth goes out the window. But that's not all. The Japanese were seriously scratching their heads over how to power the laser so it could do more than just fire a couple of shots. It needed to actually function in real combat. Because after just one shot, that kind of laser drains its battery almost like your smartphone after a full day on TikTok. And then there's the engine, another fascinating piece of the puzzle. They're planning to install an all-new XF91 turbofan co-developed with the IHI Corporation. It's supposed to give the FX super cruise capability without afterburners similar to the F-22 Raptor, but also provide enough juice for all those electronic toys and the combat laser. And here's the big question. Will it have enough thrust and power to handle all this gear? Now about the generation label. Everyone's shouting, it's going to be a sixth generation fighter. But let's stay grounded. There isn't a single operational sixth gen jet anywhere on the planet yet. Even America's NGAD and Europe's Tempest are still in development. All those flashy concept art and renders, sure, they look amazing, but we don't even have a fully built prototype flying around yet. Will the FX end up competing with the NGAD and Tempest? Well, that's where you guys can crack a smile. It's like watching three ambitious guys at the starting line of a marathon. Everyone's laced up in the top tier running shoes, but nobody's actually started running yet. That said, the FX is definitely more than just another attempt to build a cool fighter jet. But for now, the real battle isn't happening in the skies. It's happening in the labs, where engineers are trying to blend stealth, lasers, artificial intelligence, and somehow make sure the whole thing actually gets off the ground.